Hey, what's good everybody? So after hundreds of hours of playing Cyberpunk and also thanks to your guys' comments and requests under my montages to share some of my builds, I finally decided to do so and also, while I'm at it, I decided to make a video about it. So as the title says, I'm starting with this all-in netrunning guide, which is I think the most powerful build that you can get in this game, especially that you can max it out very, very early. But generally in this video, I will present two different builds. The first one is going to be a kind of a stealth netrunner, which will be entirely about net running and you will be able to max out this build when you're level 29 which is extremely early but since from that point you will still be able to get 21 more attribute points that means you will be able to do a hybrid build if you feel like it so i decided to make a breakdown of that as well if you want to see both of those builds in action there are going to be links in the description so make sure to check it out but there are also going to be bits from these videos in in this video because i'm lazy to record again Nevertheless, I divided this video into chapters so you can guys jump in whatever part you want. First, we're going to talk about how to start with this build and how to level up this build and some tips and tricks regarding that. Then we are going to start with the net running build and I will talk about cyber work, quick hacks, perks, all that juicy stuff. And then I'll talk about the hybrid build and the differences and what I would do differently for this build. And at the very end, I will talk about some general tips and tricks and some additional info that you might might find useful. So let's begin. Okay, so after starting a new playthrough, it doesn't actually matter what path you take, unfortunately, but you get seven attribute points. You want to distribute three points into intelligence, three points into cool, and that one last point doesn't really matter. You can put it whatever you want, but I myself would choose either body or reflexes. If it comes to the prologue, I would honestly do everything by the book, which means that I would focus mainly on the main story, but also feel free to do some side activities to get that sweet, sweet XP. And since the story missions give loads of XP, mixing it up with some side activities should make you level 8 or 9 at the end of the prologue. And while you're leveling, I highly recommend spending all your attribute points into the intelligence tree, because if you're going for that Netrunner build, this one will benefit you the most. Unless in that time you will max out either Cold Blood or Ninjutsu, then you probably want to put some points into Cool instead, because yeah, you want to level up Cold Blood as, as quickly as possible. About the perk points though, I will talk about it once we talk about the builds but before we get to that let's talk about some things that you can do during free roam after the prologue is over and those things will help you out a ton all right, so since now you are able to get out of Watson, let's capitalize on that. So first thing I'd recommend doing is getting a better cyber deck. So if you got 12 or more street cred, make sure to pick up Stevenson MK2. And I think it is the best choice, especially because of the cooldown reduction. As for the quick hacks that I would recommend using while leveling, it is definitely overheat with short circuit. That works really well until you get legendary quick hacks, because then things get even more simple but I'll get to that later. But also, let's take a look at your talent trees. Until that point, I don't think you would have a lot of perk points. I think you would have around 20 or something. Bruh. Fortunately enough, we can change that. All around the map in Cyberpunk, you have locations in which you can find perk shards. One perk shard basically gives you one perk point and there are like 10 or 12 locations like this around the map. It's, it's hard to say because they started adding new ones after like new updates were coming up. So you can check the locations on the Cyberpunk Wiki the link is in the description or you can check my video in which i will go through each of those locations one by one and the link is also in the description another tip is going to be about cyberware to get while leveling and first we're going to start with memory boost it is basically like the best cyberware that you can get as a netrunner and it is literally free for the take-in on that and cpd scanner right there so make sure to get it as soon as possible because it will help you out a lot especially that enemies there are quite low level i mean i did it very hard on level 16 or 17 and didn't have any problems with it so you should be good next helpful thing is going to be optical camo you also want to get it as soon as possible because it will help out with stealth think a lot i would recommend either the epic variant or legendary the epic one you can get right here and the legendary one you can get from the aldecaldos camp if you progress the panam story and the last cyberware i would recommend getting while you're leveling is subdermal armor different rarities require different secrets so keep that in mind all right but enough of that now 
let's talk business. Now, as I've mentioned at the beginning, the first build is going to be about Stealth Netrunner. So basically the only attributes that you need to max out to max out this build's potential is going to be intelligence and cool. Those two trees combined are so incredibly powerful that you can breeze through almost every group of enemies you can find. Later on, I will of course talk about cyberware for this build, but let's begin with the perks. So basically as you're leveling up, first thing that you want to get is this 20 intelligence. You basically want it so bad because 20 intelligence allows you to craft legendary quick hacks. And legendary quick hacks, they're, they're just really good. Let's just say they're really good. And it's not only due to the high damage you can do with them, but mostly due to their passives that are just extremely powerful. On the other hand though, there is a workaround for this, meaning that you don't exactly need 20 intelligence. I think what you need is 12. Because if you have 12 intelligence, there is a perk called uh, Data Mine Virtuoso in the Breach Protocol tree, which basically gives you 100% of looting a quick hack from an access point. And access point points are those kind of like routers scattered around the city that usually just drop money and components. And if you find an access point that requires 10 or more intelligence, then it there is a high chance that it's gonna drop a legendary quick hack, so the best one you can get. And if you basically wanna max out your deck with all the quick hacks that you can get, there is a nice spot in a city center with multiple access points, actually in the same spot where the gig serial suicide takes place. If you need more details on this, I also have a video of this so yeah you can check it in the description. The one thing to keep in mind though is that data mind virtuoso doesn't work in everybody's game. For example for me it is bugged so for me it doesn't matter if I have the perk or not access points just <laughs> don't drop quick hacks at all. I don't know why. But make sure to check because if you got it then there is a way to become much much more powerful way sooner. Okay but I digress let's go back to the perks. Let's start with the breach protocol and the intelligence tree. Bridge protocol honestly is a thing that makes net running so strong, especially in the early and mid game. In the late game though, after you get so many cyberware, so many quick kicks and everything, it is not that necessary, but before that, it really helps. So here basically you have a screenshot of perks that you actually want to have. Remember that the perk points aren't actually unlimited, unfortunately, so we have to choose wisely. The demons that I would go for is mass vulnerability because of the increased damage and all that. Big sleep also because cameras are very annoying when you're sneaking. And I also would consider either turret tamer or turret shutdown. But that really is up to you which one you want to choose. Also, until like mid game or until the moment that you feel like you have enough eddies consider advanced data mine because the amount of eddies that you get from access points it's pretty decent what's worth noticing though is that i would just put one point into each kind of like a demon perk except advanced data mine because the only thing that changes is its duration from three minutes to six minutes and in my experience encounters in cyberpunk rarely take longer than like two minutes three minute stops in my opinion for it to last six minutes you literally would have to take a nap in the middle of it without stopping the game <laughs> i don't know but also remember about these perks when you reach like a very high level of intelligence because they just increase efficiency a lot especially considering ram cost and the amount of time that you need to put into uploading demons which can get quite boring after some time so yeah you'll need every help you can get so yeah there's that let's jump into a little bit more interesting tree which is quick hacking everything here is obviously quick hacks related as the name says so all the stuff here will elevate quick hacks onto literally another level so here is basically what you want to have as you can see almost everything is maxed out here because almost every perk in this tree is actually useful and helpful especially if you're going for a full net runner build as you can see the only perks i skipped are the ones that allow you creating your own quick hacks but obviously if data mine virtuoso that i mentioned before doesn't work for you you will need those perks to create legendary quick hacks but what is actually kind of cool that if you craft all of them or all the ones that you want you can literally just reset the perks and redistribute points and this time you can skip those perks and it will save you four points which is a lot another thing i would skip is the weak links and like you don't really need a lot of RAM to hack devices anyways and also I would skip I spy especially on like mid game and higher because if you're sneaking and quick hacking the damage is just so huge that rarely anybody can spot you 
so yeah and also one last important thing about this particular skill tree is that once you reach 20 skill level of quick hacking you really want to buy that last perk which increases ram recovery by 50 percent it is really good all right now let's go to ninjutsu in the cool tree you don't really need much here since you're not using physical weapons but quick hacks but still there are some perks that can benefit that playstyle first thing is that thanks to the perk critical error you are now able to land crits with your quick hacks and because of that you really want to get as much crit chance and as much crit damage as you can possibly get basically that's why i've chosen strike from the shadows but also from the shadows can help if you get spotted another perk worth getting is ghost which increases detection time which makes you harder to spot also i went for assassin perk to have increased damage and crouching tiger because it's just nice to move a little bit faster once you're crouched now cold blood is where things get a little bit complex mostly because not everybody understands how good of a tree cold blood is so to explain shortly what cold blood actually is it is kind of like a buff that stacks up to five times if you get all the perks and you get one stack per elimination or there is a chance to get one once you land a crit if you get the perk called and calculating once you get all the talents here and most importantly frosty synapses and quick transfer then once you get five eliminations or land crits and get five stacks of cold blood your quick hack cooldowns will be reduced by 30 percent and quick hack upload time will be reduced by 20 percent now since this build very much makes you a glass cannon if you still got some perk points to spare then go ahead and put them into any defensive perks because they will help but to avoid getting too much damage remember to upgrade your clothing every level and get those armadillos baby all right now let's get to the cyberware basically since you're going for maxed out intelligence what you're going to focus on mostly is frontal cortex first thing what you want to get here is memory boost which i mentioned earlier the highest rarity that you can actually find in the game is rare and you can loot it from this ncbd scanner over here memory boost is extremely strong because it gives you three ram units after an elimination so thanks to this cyberware and the perk named forget me not you get four ram units per elimination and this is kind of buzzing another thing is limbic system enhancement for the crit chance and the visual cortex support for higher crit damage next going to ocular system you really want the epic kiroshis and next that with a mod that gives plus two crit chance Another very important cyberware that you can get is the optical camel. It's in the integuminary system and it is extremely powerful. I mentioned it on the leveling tips and tricks, but this shit is just too good. It just makes it invisible for 10 seconds. Like, <laughs> what are we talking about? Now, if it comes to leg cyberware, I always go with double jump, no matter the build. But for this build, you could also get the epic version of fortified ankles, which kind of allows you to hover in the air and hack people in the air which is kind of decent but i still prefer double jump it is an interesting alternative though as for the operating system i think tetratronic rippler beats every single one once you get that 40 street cred it works really well with all kinds of quick hacks especially if you get the perks from the talent trees that i explained before so you can go both with combat quick hacks such as like short circuit or overheat but you can also go with ultimate quick hacks which takes to this cyber deck have reduced cooldown by 45 seconds and they can also spread to one additional target which is absolutely op especially if you get the perk diffusion then it's like <laughs> but before i jump into quick hacks and talk about which ones are the best i just wanted to mention the other cyberware slots that i didn't talk about basically what you want to do here is you want to put whatever you can because you don't really have that much body you don't have that much reflexes or technical ability so if you really got some eddies to spare and want to buy some more cyberware you can go ahead but it is not at all essential for this build although it can be helpful okay now the last thing about this build we're talking about i think are the the quick hacks and which quick hacks to use and which not to use <laughs> now since tetratronic is basically so good with almost every kind of quick hacks it is totally up to you which ones you want to choose but if it comes to my preference then here's what i'd use on my character Legendary Pink, I mean, Pink is generally very, very useful if you want to know where the enemies are. Short Circuit, because after you get those high levels of intelligence and cool, it is just, <laughs> it is just too good. Plus, it has an extremely powerful passive that makes crits from all kinds of weapons apply this quick hack effect, which is just 
absolutely incredible. System reset is basically a guaranteed takedown, so it's also really good. Plus, it has a nice passive. Suicide is another guaranteed takedown quick hack, but it's lethal compared to the system reset. Detonate grenade can also do really good, especially if you have enemies bulked together. And reboot optics, which I rarely use as a standalone quick hack, but it has a great passive which unlocks an optics jammer demon that you can upload during breach protocol. And what it basically does is when somebody is starting to like spot you, the reboot optics quick hack automatically uploads on him, which is just super helpful if you want to stealth things out. All right, so that's basically it for this build. Um, as I've said, with this build, you can become an absolute unit on level 29. But as I've mentioned in the beginning, if you continue playing and leveling up, you still have 21 attribute points until you hit the level cap. And this, ladies and gentlemen, allows you to max out one of the other perk trees that are in the talent pool. So you can go for either body or reflexes or technical ability. And as you probably guessed, this is basically where we talk about that hybrid build I promised. But first of all, it's worth mentioning that you don't really have to do it like this. I mean, you can start with leveling either reflexes first and then go to intelligence, but I would do it the other way around, mostly because the sweet cyberware that you can get from intelligence and especially the short circuit that allows you just pop off with literally every weapon without needing to have basically any talents in any perk tree regarding that specific type of weapon. And what I exactly mean you can see on this clip over here, where I am literally mowing through enemies with Lizzie's gun while having four reflexes and absolutely no perk points put into any reflex tree. But that also applies to the auto weapons such as mono wire and so on. Like once you get that crit chance pretty high up and that short circuit of legendary rarity, the game just it just becomes pretty easy no matter what difficulty you're playing but if you want to become even more powerful with the weapons this time you probably will have to use the weapon type of your choice if you want to use handguns or smgs or rifles or sniper rifles or blades like katanas and knives also it applies to monowire and mantis blades then it would be good to focus on reflexes and the sap tree which represents the type of your favorite weapon if you want to level up reflexes i wouldn't go further than 11 points into the body tree I would put this many points in body just to get multitasker and like a butterfly perks which really help out with mobility. But getting some defensive perks here will also help out a lot especially if you're like you're taking too much damage. But if you don't want to put that many points into body and focus entirely on reflexes then if you still want mobility and some defense you can go with cold blood because you still have some perks here that you can get that will allow you to do more damage and receive less damage. And this is basically the reason why I think this is the best talent tree in cyberpunk mostly because it's just so versatile and applies to most playstyles. But that was the scenario when you focus on reflexes. But if instead of those previously mentioned weapons you prefer fists, bats or batons or LMGs or shotguns, in that case it would be wise to put most of your talent points into the body and just a few leftover ones into reflexes. And just like I said in the reflexes scenario, you just want to focus on the one subtree in body that represents the type of your favorite weapon. And also don't forget about cold blood. Now I won't go into too much detail talking about which perks to choose in which talent tree because in that case that video would be like two hours long. But I feel like having 20 intelligence and the cyber that you can get with it and also having that legendary short circuit makes you already super super powerful. So honestly further perk choice doesn't alter things that much unless you're going for that secret ending of course and think a little bit about putting those perks right. As for the quick hacks that I would recommend using while using weapons, I would of course go with short circuit but that goes without question. Although another one that is really helpful is legendary cripple movement because it literally immobilizes enemies for a few seconds. And since it spreads it really works well with some perks that I talked about earlier but I also would recommend putting legendary contagion into your cyber deck for the passive. Now when you use cripple movement on enemies it literally immobilizes the whole level so it's it's pretty much OP and of course as the last thing for the hybrid remember about cyber work because once you get the higher level in body and reflexes you will be able to get some pretty nice cyber work and fill out the slots that you have previously ignored so yeah that's basically it if it comes to the builds now it is time for some general tips and tricks and some mod choices that can help out a lot with this playstyle if you are on PC so let's start with the tips and tricks while you're leveling remember to sell all the 
the junky weapons, do not sell the iconics because dismantling weapons is just not very lucrative in Cyberpunk. If you want to get the upgrade components though, feel free to visit any weapon vendor or a general vendor and they will have a bunch of those. And they're also pretty much dirt cheap. Also, if you're wondering what buffer size means on the cyberdeck description, it basically represents how many choices can you make in Breach Protocol. Also, if you're farming NCPD scanners and gigs and want to hoard as much weapons and as much armor as you can possibly carry but still get that carry weight limit, remember that your car's or motorbike's trunk works as a stash. So you can just stash everything there until you find the selling point. And the last tip is going to be about quick hacks and to be more precise, if you want a quick hack to appear first on your list of quick hacks then make sure to equip it last simple as that okay now let's go to the mods that are pretty fun with this playstyle first mod that really helps out a lot is breach takedown it basically allows you to automatically upload breach protocol upon a takedown next mod is called breach protocol auto solver i use it a lot because i've grown tired of the mini game and this uh, kind of like a program actually solves it for me so i <laughs> i really like it a lot and it really makes the gameplay much much more fun i honestly don't know if this program is safe to use but it's on the nexus so i get it from there now i also been asked many times under my videos what armor is this and how to get this look so if you are on a console i am sorry to say that basically all of it is modded but if you are on pc then i will put these mods in the description as well all right so yeah I, I guess that's it holy shit that's a that's a long video but anyways i really hope this video was informative for you guys just so you know i will try to keep this updated in case of future updates also if you have some specific questions or just want to find a nice place to chill out and play some games with nice people make sure to join the discord it's gonna be in the description but also feel free to share in the comment if there is anything that you would have done better or maybe there's a better choice than I presented in this video that will help out a lot. And of course, remember to leave a like and subscribe if you are not yet subscribed. I have lots of premium cyberpunk content on the channel, so make sure to check it out. And yeah, thank you guys very much for watching and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. See ya!